Hello, my name is Colin Reddington, and this is the second in a series of videos about ways of getting users' attention in Access. And today we're going to concentrate on animation and background effects. Now, the attention seeking database has been designed to show a whole series of different things, which will be explained over a period of four videos. The first one looks at different sorts of message boxes. In this particular one, though, we're going to look at forms and background effects. The forms that we're going to look at will have animation effects, transparency, also fade and rounding effects here. And we're going to look at different ways of affecting the background so that we can concentrate on the, what is in the foreground by dimming it, blurring it, or even removing the background completely. The third video in the series will look at flashing and scrolling text messages. And the fourth one will be about sound and a alert message for users. OK, let's look at the database now. And you'll be familiar with this interface from the first video in the series here. And today we're going to concentrate on just animation, transparency and fade, followed by these three to do with the back. Now when I click on this, a series of forms in turn will be shown, four in all. The first one will show transparency effects. And the first thing that's going to happen though is that this main form is going to fade out. As it does so, then it's replaced with a login form. And the unusual thing about this login form is that it's actually not a perfect rectangle. You've got a missing section on the top right and on the bottom left. But if we go to design view, those two sections are there. We've got an image over a transparent background there. And the, that section on the top right, this section on the bottom left are invisible. Let's go to form view again. And now if we close this form now, we're going to get a more extreme version of the same thing, where we've got a shaped form, an image of my dog, and it's also going to be an animated form. It's going to move up the screen over a period of time. Now that is just a standard form. Obviously a fairly extreme version of that, with no obvious thing about what you click on. Well, about the only things you can click on are the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. And if we click on the eyes, it takes us to design view, and you'll see there what I meant about the fact that we've got transparency effects again. We've got an image of my dog superimposed on, on a background which is actually transparent. And if we go to back to form view for this one again and anim animate it again, I'll show you what else we can do with this. Let's let the dog speak. As I said, it's not just a pretty face there, it's a form with transparency. And we've got a customised form here with a couple of links here, one to my website and the other one to my YouTube channel. And you're welcome to click on those in your own time by using the downloaded app from my website there. And the third thing we can do then is we can click on the node that closes this form, but it also then opens the next one. And the next one is another animated form, but this time, as well as moving across the screen, other things happen. It grows, it changes colour, and then finally, the corners get rounded. It's pretty hideous, as I think you'll agree. As it says there, it's a bit like a terrible PowerPoint presentation. Showing what you can do doesn't mean you should do it. Maybe you've got a use for this, but I'd be very wary about doing all of those things in one form there. So as I said, it moved down from the top left corner there, it changed colour, it grew, and then at the end the corners got rounded. We'll show you how all those things get done later. But let's show you another one with the rounding effect, and let's take that one to an extreme as well. And if you really wanted to, you can have a circular form. And in doing this, I've got the same rounding effect, but I've rounded it so the entire quadrant there gets rounded. So the end result, if you start with a square form, is a circular form. Let's show you the original form here. How do I do all of these things? Well, basically with a lot of API calls. Now the transparent login form itself then uses this particular code, transparent form with visible control. And when I go to the definition of that, you'll see it's a fairly complicated set of API calls here. I don't intend to go through these APIs. There's far too many of them to actually deal with in here. There's a lot of different declarations in there and functions and so on there. Just to say they, they work, you can play around with them, but I don't intend to explain them there. The second form, image of the dog, goes to design view again. 
and if we now click on the code for that you can see again when it opens it's the same API call as the other one here what I do want to show you is how did I move this well it's a timer event over a period of time then starts off at position 10 that's in from the left it then starts off at this particular height here and then gradually it will move this by a set amount each time until it ends up where I want to do that. One thing I did forget to show you though with this form and if I just bring it back it'll have to animate again this time animating over the other one and that is I can drag that form from anywhere to anywhere else. Anything that's not actually clickable I can use that to drag. Okay the next one that I showed you is the animated form here. Now the animated form again has a very very complex timer event. It starts off in the top left corner. It starts off with a set of colors here. The form header, the form footer and the detail section are all defined there. Black, blue and white. And then gradually over a period of time I move that and what I'm doing here then is I'm moving it down by a set amount each time I go through a loop and a loop is 510 stages twice the number of values available in the color range here deliberately every other time that the loop runs it will change the color it will increase or decrease these by one up to a certain end amount there and when I've got to the end amount that the detail will stop after a certain number of loops a few more to change it to, to get the color I want for the header and footer and so on. So that happens over a period of time but meanwhile I'm also growing the form okay so as I move it it gets larger here and then finally when it's finished I turn off the timer and then I do another series of steps where I gradually round off the corners there by a number of intervals here, 200 in this case. And this uses another API, which is found in mod create round corners, as you'd expect here. Go to the definition, and again, lots of different declarations, create round rectangular region, etc, etc, etc. And what I can do with this is I can change the amount to actually round off by. And the fourth one of those forms, then the circular form, exactly the same idea. I've actually set the round to 500. If I use a different value, it would round by a different amount. And so if we go to the definition of this again, the view code, we set it at 500 here. Let's set it at 100. And you can see we just rounded a certain amount there. Change it to 200. And what it will now do is have a larger rounding effect. 300, larger still, and as I showed you originally, 500 is is more than enough to actually get it to round completely, as you can see. Now what else can you do then? If you want to, you can actually focus on the foreground by dimming the background. The message box is nice and clear, but everything in the background there is, is darkened, and therefore the user will focus on what's in the foreground here. It doesn't have to be a message box, so it can be a form. And I use this in one of my apps here to actually have a series of application tips at startup. And as soon as we close this form here, and if it had been just the message box before it had been the same there, that then brings the form back to normal automatically. So how is that done? Dimming the background, we use a form called Form Dimmer. And Form Dimmer, again, uses a series of API calls. You probably yes I'm going to say this by now again very complicated for effect of it is that it very simply dims the form and then when you unload it you undim the effect again just basically replace that and you don't need to actually know how it works you can just use it as is another way of doing it is just to blur it should have gone to spec savers the background's been blurred again I could do this with a form and if I click OK it will return the screen to normal now there's two ways you can do this. One way is that you can use APIs again and use the APIs to actually blur that in real time. But it takes a couple of seconds or so. So what I've done is I've just cheated. I've got a, a background image here which is a blurred version of this form. And when I click on that, the effect is instantaneous.
and the third one of these to remove the background there's two different ways this can be done as well originally I had it so it actually took away the application left you with the desktop and removed all the icons on the desktop as well but for various reasons I've changed to a simpler version of this and that is just a plain blue background that fills the screen completely how's that work then it hides the navigation pane, it hides the taskbar, and it opens a form called Form Blue, which, as you'd expect, is the background. You can have any colour you like there. When it closes, it then does everything in reverse and brings you back to normal there, once you've actually clicked the OK message here. Hopefully that's given you some ideas. Go back to my PowerPoint, and if we go on to the next slide here, this is the address where you can find the attention seeking app with all of the different things I'm going to show you with the series of four videos here. And finally, just to say as ever, thanks for watching. If you found it useful, please add a like and leave a comment, suggest future topics, and please subscribe and then you'll be notified whenever I upload any new videos. And there'll be the remaining two in this series over the next couple of weeks or so. See you soon.